Oh, and I have another driveway update for you guys. I got to take you down to the lower part of the driveway. Something's interesting is going on. Uh, maybe you've got some ideas of how to fix it, okay? But I got to show you what's going on towards the bottom of the driveway today. Well, hey folks, Amy from Colorado Mountain Living and giving you an update this week. What's been going on? It's actually been a little bit quiet so but although we did have the moose around all week we've had this i think it's a female moose i'm wondering if she's pregnant but she's been grazing the entire parameter of our of our uh property here even into our neighbor's property so it's just been fun she keeps popping up all around the outskirts of the property, eating up all of the fresh grass. So, so first thing I gotta do is get in the beehives and start filling up their feeders. I know this is the time of year when they're really trying to build up. And after I got rid of that mouse nest and uh, hive number three, I've got to get them their food back, just in case. They weren't really taking the feed, but it was getting kind of old. So now I've got fresh feed. I'm gonna put it in there and see, if, see how they do with it. So there are bees in the feeder, although the feed is kind of crystallized. So I think I'm going to add some more or stir it up because I see the bees in here. They're really, whoops. I think you can see them right there through the, through the, through the, um, the mesh. So I think they're getting, they're definitely getting food out of this, but it might be tough because it's a little crystallized. So I'm gonna stir that up so it doesn't solidify. could also add some more water it's definitely I think you know naturally what happens is that the feed dehydrates and so you start to get more of a syrup and when that happens you get crystallization this is just something I've noticed in Colorado beekeeping because it's so dry here in the climate so another thing I could do is add more water to this but the bees are seem to be taking it so so looking pretty good in the hives um, the other thing I need to do is get down to the bottom level and clean it out. I did that on hive number three, the one that had the mouse in it. So these two probably also need a good cleaning out. And um, on another nice day when it's not quite so breezy, I think I'll do that. Just take out, take the boxes apart and then sweep out all the, the grime on the, the bottom level. So I've talked about the springs that we have on our property. We are, this is kind of an area where we get a lot of moisture, a lot of water coming up out of the ground. One of the big areas is down by where our cistern is. And you can see it, it's just trickling right out of the ground there. I mean, it just is a constant steady flow and that was a great place to put a cistern to kind of capture it all. But we're noticing that there's more places along the driveway that also have a lot of water. Looking up the driveway here, you can see, whoa, that was a, really fast hummingbird trying to buzz me off. So look at all of the moisture right here on the side of the driveway. You know, it's trickling down from the inside. Look at where all the grass is growing. Tons of moisture right there. And it just seems to be maybe like a unique spring. Let's get a little closer. I can see my clovers coming up. See all the little clover greens right there. So, so look at all this moisture. Brian is convinced that there's a new spring on this side of the driveway. Because it's not all the way up. The drive it's about halfway so the origin is right about here you see the house in the distance and right about halfway up the driveway there's a unique little spring kind of bubbling out of the ground here <laughs> see that just kind of coming out right here there's nothing up here right so because there's nothing up here we know it's not drainage from some water collection up there but it's just uniquely coming out right here so we kind of have our own little spring on this side of the driveway. 
But what I wanted to show you guys is even a little bit further down. It's right next to where Brian dug the drainage trench. So let's go take a look at that and you can tell me your opinions. All right guys, well I'm down at the lower part of the driveway. Right next to me is the drainage ditch that Brian put in um, back in September. So let's take a look at it closely. I can hear it from here. And I can see the clover that I planted a couple weeks ago. So the clover's coming up. I'm gonna walk all over it. Look at all this water, guys. Now, there's, there's no snow to be seen. All the snow's melted on the property, on our neighbor's property. Everything that was draining here, all the snow melt is, is gone. So this is all residual water that's within the ground and it's just continuing to drain. So it's definitely providing a place for the water shedding off these properties underneath the ground to, to drain in an easily observed way. Even look at the surface here. So the snow was all here maybe last week, several days ago, but there's still a lot of draining water right on the surface here that's, um, that's coming into this drainage trench. But the most interesting part is where the culvert is. So wait until I show you this. The rocks seem to create a lot of uh, sound. And it's coming up from the other direction as well. We definitely got, we got water flow. We got water flow. It's diverting it, but look at this. We got water on the driveway still. It's not crossing over the top, right? So what's going on? See how this water is all along the very edge of the driveway? You know, the, the ditch is over here, but look at all this water right here. And it hasn't rained, okay? This isn't like residual from leftover rainstorm. This isn't a puddle from leftover rain. Okay, look at all this. So what is this phenomenon, really? I think what it is, is water is seeping up from the ground underneath, and it's just kind of coming up. So it's uh, creating almost like another trench. It's not a trench, but it's creating another area for the water to collect. And that's what we're trying to get away from. So the question is how to fix this problem. I mean, are we going to have to dig another trench right here? Hopefully not. Maybe we dig something perpendicular to kind of divert it towards, towards the trench. That's a little bit, uh, you know, that's six feet away. Or Brian's idea was maybe we, he, maybe he has to go back and dig the trench even deeper to kind of encourage that water to head to the lowest point instead of coming up out of the ground. But I'll tell you guys, when we looked at this property years ago, when we walked through this area, this, the, the easement area, it was very marshy and it was very wet. And I thought, man, how could somebody build a house here? You know, our, our neighbor built a house right on top of it. Um, fortunately, they did plenty of drainage mitigation, but it was, it's a very wet area. I mean, it's, it's uh, on the downside of the hill, the downside of the mountain where all the snow and all the snow melt is collecting. So this is where it goes before it hits into the rivers and the streams. Let me take you closer to the road. So the road is pretty much bone dry compared to what it was a month ago when everything was melting. Remember, it was like that muddy mess and now it's bone dry and all of the drainage from the ground on the side of the road is, is going through the culverts appropriately. So there's good water drainage at the road. Now, Brian's drainage, drainage trench is origin right up here. So he kind of started it, it's not too deep, but he kind of starts it right here. You can see where, you can see where it's wet. It's wanting to collect water. The ground is really damp. And then as we get closer to a lower point, there's more water flow, right? But also at the top of the driveway here, look at look at the um, the moisture right here. So you can see it's definitely wet here and really wet right here. It's like the water wants to come up right here. And then you can see how it goes all the way down to the culver area where it, where almost like it crosses over. But I think that's just because it's a low point. So anyway, this is our situation. Our situation is still a lot of moisture, not up at the house so much, but down here in the bottom driveway where Brian did the water mitigation, but it's not quite 100% because we are getting extra water alongside of the driveway. So either digging down further into the trench he did. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking our choices are one, either to dig further down, make a deeper trench 
that's further in towards the trees or make some type of perpendicular uh, um, connection for this inner water to have, have a better place to drain so it doesn't build up next to the side of the driveway. How the water is really collecting here right at the culvert area and it's crossing over on its own accord over the top of the driveway, which isn't ideal, right? We want it to go underneath the driveway. We want it to kind of come out here, but there's definitely plenty of water flow. I mean, everything, the culvert is definitely doing its job. And you can see this is our neighbor's culvert he put in for a French drain around his house. So he's got water coming out of this pipe as well. But it, you know, it makes its own little stream. And this is where the moose like to hang out, the wetland area. Lots of, lots of shrubs to chew up and lots of green grass. So guys, let, let us know what you would recommend in the comments. Would you dig a deeper trench? on the other side or just creating an additional exit for that water that's right up next to the driveway because that would be something we want to clear that up. You know and here's just a quick shot of the driveway it's still holding up really well with the geocell. There's just some outlines of it it's really kept the driveway in place we've been really happy with it but we are going to get some more gravel to put on top because when it does get wet it's still really soft. So even though it's staying in place, we'd rather have something more sturdy. All right, and now I'm up at the top corner of the driveway, so I want to show you guys the spring up here and how it creates its own little stream. I think it's pretty clear. You can see the water that comes straight out of the side of the ground. I mean, look how wet that dirt is. And the origin for the spring is up right up here. Brian did dig a little bit deeper. He took a few scoops so we could have a little bit of a pool here. But look at how it comes right out of the ground. Looks like it's coming right out from underneath that rock. It kind of spurts out right there. There's a little bit right here, but most of the flow is, is right here. And then it just kind of flows into this area. And then just flows all the way around, or all the way around the side of the driveway, and then it kind of ends up in the grass down there. Well, I spotted my first dandelions, and they're right in the driveway. So literally, these are the first flowers that I've seen this spring. So we're on our way, guys. More flowers to come. Beagle prefers the shade this time of year. The sun's pretty strong, and it can get really hot on his little bed out by the deck. So a lot of times he'll come around to the front and lie down in the shade. Well guys, that's the update for this week. So Brian has been making progress on the shower area. He's been hanging all of the Dura Rock. So a little bit boring. I don't want to make a full video about hanging Dura Rock, but I think by the weekend we'll be getting to the tiling stage, hopefully. So that'll be really exciting and I'll definitely keep you posted on that. But uh, um, right for, but for now we're just enjoying this nice weather and the blue skies and looking for flowers guys. Thanks for joining. We'll keep you posted and definitely drop a note in the comment if you have an idea about that drainage problem. Okay. See you guys. Bye.